Good morning, everybody. And it's about time to start our this morning session, and this is a special morning session, uh, as you see. And uh, first, uh, EPSA is very grateful for, to Avanti for setting, by, setting up this prize. Uh, the, now, uh, the EPSA award in Lipitz. This is the European version of a very of a prize, scientific prize with a very high reputation, and uh, uh, it will give visibi visibility certainly to EPSA and also to the European research uh, in this area. Uh, also with me, uh, we have uh, Walt Shaw here in the platform. Walt Shaw certainly is a scientist, and Walt Shaw is Avanti, as most of you know. Let's say the boss of Avanti, and it's uh, with a great pleasure to have him uh, here with us. So, Walt, uh, first on behalf of HEPSA, uh, just to thank you for setting, setting up this European version of this uh, uh, prize that had started before uh, in the Biophysical Society of USA. Also, it's with great pleasure that uh, the first, uh, uh, this, uh, this uh, prize is awarded for the very first time to Felix Gogne. Felix Gogne is quite well known of most of you, and according to the regulations, uh, this prize is given for outstanding contributions in the scientific area of uh, membrane biophysics and related areas. Uh, and uh, there will be no need just to uh, make a long description about the contribution of uh, Felix going in this area. Uh, essentially, everything related to ceramides uh, in this very moment and recent years, and certainly he will tell us certainly about his trajectory uh, during his, uh, 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 during, uh, before when started up. <coughs> Felix going is a uh, doctor by uh, basic formation, I mean medicine doctor, uh, and then uh, followed uh, at the time uh, his first PhD in England with Chapman, so, and Chapman had a real strong contribution at the time in the formation of the Spanish school uh, of membranes. Uh, after the prize, I will also uh, just uh, uh, spend a few moments just letting you that in addition of excellent, certainly scientist, and this is the prize, Felix Goyne is also a scholar. And very briefly, I will mention you some of his related interests, and some of them certainly they are intersecting uh, uh, science, and that it will be a pleasure. So first, uh, it would be my pleasure just to invite Walt Shaw uh, for uh, giving the, the prize uh, to Felix Gogne and certainly inviting Felix to the platform. <laughs> Thank you very much. This is a really special, special honor. We have a, a plaque here that is suitable for framing. I expect to be up in uh, Felix's office soon. And we have a medal that uh, it's, I assume this is a good luck medal that you can carry in your pocket. Thank you. And there is a transfer of money that I'm sure Alicia will take care of. <laughs> you bet. <laughs> now, this, this world of lipids all started in 1786 at the beginning of the French Revolution. There was a cemetery in Paris, right in the middle of Paris, called the Cemetery of the Innocents, that had 1.2 million bodies in this cemetery. And it was leaking fluids and making uh, biological terrorism. So they moved the cemetery to the catacombs. And in doing so, they looked at the brains of some of these cadavers, and they had a greasy oil. And it took them 86 years to figure out that this was lecithin. I'm sure there were some cerebrosides in there also. Well, Felix continues to work on this greasy oil. <laughs> OK, thank you very much. All right. <laughs> Sure, 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 sure. 
Uh, and now, well, as we always know in these times, uh, information circulates and uh, I've got some information for me certainly is not private about Felix. And uh, uh, it was just what I described to you. Felix certainly outstanding scientist, no doubt, and uh, also he's a scholar. And uh, some of these uh, related interests I would like to share with you. I've been the privilege of participating in some, in a few of them. In a moment, Senor Rui, well, he's not, uh, next slide is not coming, please. Okay, no, not, sorry. Okay, well, no, his interests, and this is well known within the Spanish communities about pyrotechnics, I should say fireworks. Uh, fireworks, uh, uh, Essentially, is uh, uh, in the Iberian Peninsula a family tradition, not the case of Felix. He's not family related to fireworks makers. Uh, and uh, is uh, fantastic. Certainly, Felix also, he makes, uh, in addition to firing them, he makes his own fireworks. Certainly, is an expert in uh, uh, everything related also to the fireworks uh, artistic uh, versions. And uh, as you know, the top it was in the Baroque, Baroque area, and here in Portugal and Spain, the top places they are Valencia, north of Portugal. Things that I learned from uh, Felix. Uh, some years ago, uh, I invited Felix to a conference uh, about uh, to come to a conference in Portugal for the Portuguese uh, Chemical Society, and uh, I told him. Oh, but uh, Felix, that it would be about fireworks, a plenary election. And he was so glad. Oh, fantastic. It's not a very old story about the membranes, really, once more. And uh, he made really fantastic firework uh, uh, plenary lecture about fireworks. And uh, on a common visit to Japan, after the meeting, he has just stayed there talking uh, and visiting his Japanese friends, the experts of handicrafts uh, in fireworks. Uh, here, this picture uh, is quite a long time ago. Uh, well, those tubes, uh, they are really the fireworks about to, uh, they are the pyrotechnics, the fireworks about to be fired. Uh, Felix is very con conscious about this. Uh, eventually, this comes from some time ago about his marriage. Uh, not sure from the, inform the, how can I say, the secret information I've got about it. And now uh, Felix here is just uh, making a fireworks show in a uh, in very important place in Madrid. This is the residency of students where most of the Spanish intellectuals lived during the 30s. The names, they are fantastic. Garcia Lorca uh, from the cinema, uh, Salvador Dali. Uh, all those Spanish intellectuals of the 30s is a place with incredible uh, tradition. So Felix is uh, setting the, fire, uh, the fireworks and, uh, well, here they are. Uh, and uh, uh, it's strong uh, intersection with uh, pyrotechnics. Uh, other ones uh, that would come up later in his life, this is, this is from uh, 2007. Uh, it's about uh, praising cholesterol and Schubert. And this is also an announcement of the very same place in Madrid at the residency of students, and uh, uh, well, it's a fantastic mix. I mean, cholesterol, cholesterol I can understand, certainly Schubert also, and this is anyway a fantastic mix, as you can imagine. Uh, and uh, this is the front page of the program about uh, the cholesterol and Schubert, again. Uh, later, he gained interest about uh, uh, singing and uh, uh, essentially German lead. Uh, and here it is, uh, I saw him, uh, this was a fantastic performance. He was singing the Winterreise uh, on his 60th birthday uh, in uh, Bilbao. And as we all know, it's something uh, beautiful uh, and this piece of Schubert. And definitely it's also a piece of resistance as you, you can imagine just uh, singing all the Winterreise. And it was absolutely beautiful on his 60th birthday. Also uh, on the... Pianist is a very reputed uh, germ, uh, specialist uh, in uh, lead. Uh, gastronomy. Gastronomy. Before going up, uh, Felix is coming from the Basque country and in uh, San Sebastian. 
is the greatest surface density of restaurants with Michelin stars. Uh, it's not other place of the world. And you, don't, you do not need to go into those restaurants. If you go into the taverns of old, uh, old San Sebastian, it's absolutely fantastic. Uh, and uh, here uh, we have uh, Felix with uh, his family and certainly dressed according to the protocol of one uh, of those uh, gastronomical societies. This one is at Bidasoa, a place uh, in the Basque country. And, uh, uh, okay, well, Felix very convincing. Uh, later, and still about the gastronomy. Well, uh, this translates as uh, um, bio um biochimico in la cocina, and it translates as uh, the a biochemist in the kitchen. So this is a publication of Felix going in all, also intersection of his uh, uh, interests uh, and uh, something beautiful. Instead of those boring uh, face diagrams for rafts that I'm used uh, to work with, these, fa these ternary face diagrams, they are related to pastry. So eventually he's also a maître pâtissier. Well, mixing up uh, flour and water and uh, lipids, I mean fat, etc. and uh, there it goes. Uh, and uh, it's a great pleasure, and uh, Felix, I think it's about time that you start up your lecture in this grand style. My pleasure, and it was a great, great pleasure that you were the first uh, EFSA award. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Manuel, and uh, congratulations for the documentation of your talk for which I suspect that you have had an assistant. Uh, well, a lifetime of oily games and greasy ministrations. I don't know what this means, frankly, but it certainly sounds nice to my ears. Uh, in fact, uh, from my very early ages, uh, I was interested in some um, uh, certain uh, uh, lipids or lipid products, particularly um, olive oil, as you can see here. And to this day, I s still ask myself uh, whether or not uh, Popeye the sailor and olive oil uh, sleep together or not. Um, well, but this is um, mainly about Avanti. Uh, it may come as a surprise to many of you, but there was life before Avanti. Uh, a dull life it was, though. We had Fluca. Fluca would sell us at an incredibly high price, a DPPC. Also DMPC and uh, phosphatidylethanolamine of dubious origin, and that was all. Of course, we had lipid products. The old ladies uh, in Cambridge, near Cambridge, I used to, to place the orders personally by phone just for the sheer pleasure of listening to their marvelous English. Uh, what these ladies essentially had was a good supplier of fresh eggs. So they would prepare egg lecithin, egg uh, PE, and egg um, almost everything. But, but, but that was it. So in practice, what we really had was plenty of column chromatography to, to prepare the, the lipids we required. Then mm, in the late 70s, when we read American journals, mainly biochemistry, American journals that took some three months to arrive here because they came by boat, um, we started reading about a certain supplier called Avanti, who could provide with uh, fantastic lipids such as phosphatidylserine or phosphatidyl inositol. Uh, but America was very far away. It was very difficult to find out the address of Avanti to write them a letter, of course. And uh, they 
Well, they wouldn't reply. But this was the, the time when a telephone operator, a bygone profession, incidentally, when a telephone operator would be extremely proud because she had been able to put you through a telephone call to America in less than three hours. So America was from Europe more or less as Mars is now from Earth. And it was only in the late 80s that the Avanti era started, so we could receive these magnificent uh, lipids. For instance, uh, oh no, not this one. Uh, uh, here you can read palmitoyl glycer. Oh, it's DPPC again. Oh. Uh, not, not much progress. Well, but, but here we have other lipids. Well, we were receiving uh, plenty of lipids, uh, and of course the, the dreaded uh, byproduct, uh, the, the bills. Um, of course, we all know that uh, the lipids come from Walt and the uh, bills come from Rowena, but um, unfortunately, uh, divorce is not being considered uh, in the coming uh, years. So I'm afraid that uh, if we want the lipids, we will have to suffer the, the collateral damage again. Um, but Avanti is not only a great supplier of lipids, they have started a new era in the philosophy of science. Up to now, we had this boring, hypothesis-driven research. You had to think and to think of a hypothesis and to test it, etc. Very boring, time-consuming. Fortunately, in modern times, we have the non-hypothesis-driven research that uh, uh, um, spares you all this uh, very painful thinking. These two kinds of science were famously uh, uh, defined by Sidney Brenner as the, the hunters and the gatherers. But Avanti, has started, as I said, a brand new era. And this is the Avanti catalog-driven research. And uh, what is this? Well, many people here, they, they're pretending not to know, <laughs> but they do know. This happens when the new summer student comes into your office and you had forgotten completely about him. And, and you have to give him a project, and then what? Then you imitate the old Romans. When they opened at random the Eneida and, and read some line of the Virgilian poem, and they would make uh, whatever they did according to what they had read. This was also called Sortes Virgilianae. Well, now you can do the same. The, the, the Avanti catalog is nowadays so thick that either in paper or, or electronically, you can open it at random and you find, say, three hydroxy, six amino, eight whatever palmitic acid. And then you look to the student, you look straight into his eyes, you say, I have a very interesting project for you. And with luck, in a few months, uh, you have another paper. So it's a fantastic contribution to, to science, really. Um, now, this is um, yesterday and today. Uh, today, I mean, the, the, the picture is rather recent, as you can uh, observe by the color of my hair. But the place is the first location of the, of the Avanti company. So this is uh, sort of, well, today and yesterday and, and hopefully tomorrow. Uh, enough of Avanti for the time being. Lisboa now, Lisbon. I am particularly delighted to be presented with this award in Lisbon because Lisbon is one of my favorite cities in the world. Lisboa con suas casas de varias cores. Lisboa. Con suas casas de varias cores. 
Lisboa com as suas casas de várias cores. This is so different that it becomes monotonous. I have so much feelings that I just think. Álvaro de Campos, a.k.a. Fernando Pessoa. Uh, my, my love story, I would say, with Lisbon started in 1972-73, when I spent the academic year at the Gulbenkian Foundation. I was then in medical school, and if you um, ask me how come that um, I was at the same time in medical school and, and, and here, um, I'm not sure, uh, but, but that's the way it was. We have here, the gentleman is Kaluste Gulbenkian, the oil nabob who brought his money to Portugal for, for the uh, great luck of, of this country, and they started the Gulbenkian Foundation that included, among many other things, the um, Gulbenkian Institute of Science at Oeiras that organized the best ever advanced courses. And I want to mention here also the late Dr. Nico van Uden, who was the director of the Gulbenkian Institute of Science and who was the person who introduced me to biophysics. Um, I still remember uh, her, how he could mm, express or explain or interpret such a complex process as yeast growth in simple thermodynamic terms, delta G, delta S, uh, with the help of a simple flow calorimeter. This mm, produced me a, a fascination that still remains. Also, at the Gulbenkian Institute of Science, I took my first, uh, uh, I would say, decent uh, uh, lessons on biomembranes from uh, Hans de Heer, uh, from the famous Van Dienen's lab in, in Utrecht. So many things happened in this year, 72, 73, that uh, were influential in my later uh, uh, career. Uh, uh, not the least my complete uh, and, and definitive uh, disinterest for clinical medicine. But um, Portugal uh, is, uh, in my case, related to lipids in more than one sense. Um, because um, Portugal has been important in increasing my own lipids. And uh, this is because of certain characteristics of, of Portuguese cooking that I will mention um, along the, the, the talk. But to begin with, the infamous fatias da China, uh, a, a concoction of egg and sugar and milk and all sorts of things that you certainly can't leave on your, on your plate. With the, with the results that you can imagine. Uh, after a um, non, not particularly memorable uh, um, medical doctor thesis in Spain, um, I, I started working on lipids in earnest uh, during my postdoc in London with the late Dennis Chapman. And I, the suggested subject was the annular lipids. In the early 60, uh, 70s, sorry, the notion was proposed that uh, membrane intrinsic proteins were surrounded by a belt, by a monolayer of phospholipids that would not exchange with the, with the other lipids. They, they would have a long life uh, uh, surrounding the protein. And this notion was spread uh, and accepted virtually by everybody. Everybody except Dennis Chapman, who used to have very different ideas from all the rest of the world on this and any other subject. The worst thing is that he was usually right. And um, particularly with the use of deuterium NMR and other techniques that were then very recent, uh, protein reconstitution and so on, 
uh, we finally uh, um, helped to, to show that if the lipids were immobilized by the protein, they were so at, at a much shorter scale than the enzyme turnover, so that if there was any immobilization, it happened at too short a scale to be uh, physiologically meaningful. Uh, the, the work that I just, in the work that I just mentioned, uh, I did it uh, together with my old friend Juan Carmelo Gomez Fernandez, uh, who also advised me uh, on detergents. Uh, uh, he, I was thinking at the time, what shall I do when I come back to Spain, etc. And Juan Carmelo told me, why don't you do something with detergents? You won't understand the thing, but you will get plenty of results. And uh, this is uh, still true uh, after, after so many years. If you want to work on something that provides plenty of results, only unintelligible, go into detergents. That's what I did, actually. So in the year, say, 79, 89, uh, in, in Bilbao already, I was working on detergents and the mechanism of membrane solubilization with Iñaki Gurtubay and uh, Alicia Alonso. What? 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 Well, uh, I'm sorry, but there was an Alicia Alonso here. Uh, maybe it will come later. Um, And for instance, one of, the, one of the observations that Alicia did in particular was that detergents could induce fusion or at least lysis and reassembly of, of lipid vesicles. Usually when you add detergents to a suspension of membranes, a milky suspension of, of membranes, you expect that the suspension will get clear. But under certain condition, actually it becomes more cloudy and only later, at higher detergent concentrations, uh, uh, solubilization starts. Uh, what you see in this uh, electron microscopy is some small sonicated unilamellar vesicles. When you add Triton X100 at a one-to-one -one, uh, molar ratio to the lipids, the vesicles grow enormously and they become a large uh, multilamellar vesicles. And this has been uh, the, this was new at the time, but it has helped later to understand many events in membrane solubilization. To see the cell, that's another fantastic uh, uh, Portuguese dessert. I would describe it as an extended egg sphingomyelin cholesterol phase, miraculously mixed with some 300 molar sucrose. Um, well, it's the sort of food that even as you are eating it, you can hear the cholesterol crystallites being deposited on your arterial walls. Um, and to see you the so means heavenly lard. So it makes me think invariably of flying pigs and the infamous uh, consequences that such a volatile behavior is supposed to have. Um, well, in 1987, we, we were interested in, in fusion because of the detergent story, and we were interested in lipid-protein interactions because of my postdoctoral years, and as a combination of both, we produced what was the, the first model system of uh, membrane fusion induced catalytically. There had been mm, model systems of fusion induced uh, um, stoichiometrically by polyethylene glycol, by lysolecithin, but this one was a catalytic system. And you can see, uh, essentially, if I can, uh, here are the vesicles before and after the treatment with phospholipase C, just a small, just a very small degree of hydrolysis caused a large degree of fusion and diacylglycerol was found to be the fusogen. Uh, 
um, about 1994, we started to study in a comparative way ceramides and diacylglycerol. Ah, here she comes, here she comes. This was uh, the idea of Alicia Alonso, my longtime uh, collaborator and intimate collaborator, I would say. Um, and and uh, she told me, well, we have been doing all these years um, phospholi uh, phospholipase C and diacylglycerol. Why don't we do sphingomyelinase and ceramide? It will be virtually the same, and we will be able to publish many papers very easily. Fortunately, uh, this didn't happen. And in fact, what we found that it was an interesting observation, again, uh, in its time, was that with diacylglycerol, uh, you have no leakage and plenty of lipid mixing and plenty of fusion. With cinamide, you have little lipid mixing or no little fusion, but plenty of leakage. So the behavior of ceramide and diacylglycerol, even if they are very similar molecules, is totally different. And this was at the origin of a series of studies on ceramide and related lipids and sphingomyelinases that are still mm, mm, being done to this day. Uh, the publication by Kai Simons and uh, Elena Ikonen of the Raft Hypothesis in 1997 uh, renewed our interest in detergents. And uh, there was an enormous confusion uh, at the end of the 90s and at the beginning of this century about rafts, detergent resistant membranes, liquid ordered domains, everything was mixed up. And well, we tried to, to, to clarify uh, the, the situation in particularly stating the difference between detergent resistant membranes and on membrane rafts. A paper of whom an anonymous referee said it will be more quoted than read and more read than understood. Okay. Feijoada. Okay. This is not uh, so much about cholesterol as about saturated fatty acids. You see, the melting temperature the transition temperature of this dish is about 60 degrees. So when you eat it and when you digest it, it's really fat in the rock solid phase. The consequences of eating a good portion of feijoada are unforgettable. So in the last period, we have been working with what we call, uh, uh, in jest, uh, the simple sphingolipids. They are simple molecules, but the, the, the behavior is really devilish and unpredictable. I'm talking of sphingosine, sphingosine 1-phosphate, ceramide, ceramide 1-phosphate, even sphingomyelin, but nothing to compare with the in big uh, glycosphingolipids, gangliosides, and so on. Now, we are very modest, and we uh, try with this one that are, in any case, incomprehensible. Um, for instance, uh, ceramide, we found mm, in the late 90s that they separate laterally into ceramide-enriched domains. We have found that they induce flip-flop movement, or scrambling, if you prefer, of membrane lipids. So you, the, in principle, there is no flip-flop motion of lipids. But if you add ceramide, then scrambling occurs. And they facilitate also the lamellar to inverted hexagonal transition. Other of these simple mm, uh, sphingolipids have also very interesting properties. For instance, sphingosine increases membrane permeability even more than ceramides. Uh, sphingosine 1-phosphate exists, I would say, soluble in the cytosol because its critical micelle concentration is 
above 10 micromolar, so it can well bind enzymes in the cytosol. Ceramide 1-phosphate forms by layers, right? just like, like any other phospholipid. And the big question behind all this is, all these are very interesting and unusual physical properties of these simple sphingolipids. But we do not know any biological correlation. Up to now, I would say that nature uses every single physical or chemical property of a biomolecule for a given effect. So I am convinced that there will be some biological meaning of these physicochemical properties that, unfortunately, it is up to now unknown. And the gap that exists between the molecular and cellular sciences doesn't help in, in solving the riddle. What is going on in our lab nowadays? I will mention just uh, three examples. First of all, we are interested in gel phases consisting of three components. Gel phases consisting of one component are well known, even of two components, but uh, no three component uh, gel phase has been properly characterized up to now. We have a, 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 a lamellar gel phase consisting of sphingomyelin, ceramide, and cholesterol in proportions approximately 2, 1, 1. And it has been characterized colorimetrically, X-ray, and all the rest of it. And it's certainly a gel phase. And the interesting thing, in my view, is that these complex gel phases open the possibility to gel phases existing, rather gel domains existing in, in cell membranes, something that has not been considered up to now. The story of lead intoxication uh, is, is a bit strange. We found a few years ago that a latent sphingomyelinase activity existed in erythrocyte cells. So that when the cell with the erythrocyte membrane was bent, the bending elicited a sphingomyelinase activity. OK, that's one story. The other story is that it is known that uh, lead, sorry, not lead, lead intoxication uh, uh, leads to anemia. And why is this so? Well, now I think we have the explanation. And what happens is that lead opens some calcium channels so that calcium enters the cell. And calcium inside the cell, erythrocyte or other cells, um, cause uh, some alterations in the cytoskeleton so that this is an erythrocyte, but you can see that the erythrocyte membrane is now uh, deformed. It contains these peaks, and the, and, the, and the bending due to these peaks elicits the sphingomyelinase activity I mentioned before. So ceramide is formed, and ceramide uh, produces flip-flop. Phosphatidylserine goes to the outside of the cell, and this is a signal of, of apoptosis, and the, and the red cells are removed uh, from blood, and this is, we believe, the cause for anemia, explained at the molecular level, and it's essentially uh, a sphingomyelinase ceramide event. And finally, I will mention the, our um, systematic studies, and extremely boring, incidentally, except for ourselves, studies of deoxy and other rare ceramides. This is done in collaboration with the lipid map uh, um, program in the United States. Actually, we do it in, in collaboration with Avanti. And we are doing the sort of a, you have fast food and slow food. Well, this is a slow science. Slowly, we are describing the properties of these ceramides that are found in cells, so they are there for some purpose. We are coming to the end. Como se encurta, como fin caminha este meu breve vão discurso humano? How this short and vain human discourse becomes shorter and uh, leads towards its end.
this is of course a sonnet of Camoens, from a sonnet of Camoens. Well, how can you survive all this shortening of your vain and brief uh, human destiny, etc.? Probably by singing. The, the gentleman there is my illustrious teacher and friend, Dalton Baldwin. Mm. And well, the end. Miguel de Unamuno. Miguel de Unamuno, born in Bilbao, was perhaps the most original of the Spanish philosophers and intellectuals of his time. On one mm, opportunity, he was being presented by King Alphonse XIII with some medal, award, or whatever. And in his thanks message, uh, Unamuno famously said, uh, thank you very much, Majesty, for this award that I think I fully deserve. Uh, the king was startled and said, well, I have presented these sort of medals or whatever to hundreds of people before, and all of them, they said, they didn't deserve it. And Unamuno's repost was, and probably they were right. <laughs> well, mm, I was thinking, is this uh, um, Avanti Award deserved? Is my award deserved or not? And with great surprise, I reached the same conclusion as Unamuno, but for very different reasons. Uh, I thought, well, look, who has selected you for this award? Who has given you this medal? And then I thought of the illustrious panel of scientists who decided that I was going to receive this award. And they must be right. Out of the respect that I have always had for them, I must accept, even if it is unlikely from my point of view, they must be right. Maybe, like Unamuno, I deserve the award. The other reason why I think I deserve the award is because it's a result of the efforts of so many people, represented here symbolically by the number of, by, the, by the names of the PhD students at the Unidad de Biofisica uh, in Bilbao. Not all of them supervised by, by me, but certainly the, the effort of, of our center. And they sort of symbolize the enormous number of people uh, with whom I have uh, collaborated. So, Thank you, Avanti. Thank you, EPSA. And thank you all for being here. Thank you, Felix, for this marvelous uh, lecture. Uh, also, uh, to thank you for all the references about Portuguese gastronomy and poetry that you come up with. And I do know that. Uh, uh, it has a special uh, meaning for you just to receive this award in Lisbon and uh, that how you enjoy in Lisbon. Uh, and as you know, in the format of the plenary lectures, there will be no questions. But uh, I would invite all the students, just uh, uh, Felix will be around during these days, and certainly you learn about lipids, membrane biophysics, and lots of other things, and it will, will be a pleasure to, uh, to you. So I would invite you once more to ask and congratulate Felix for uh, his award. And uh, well, uh, this is the end of the EPSA Prize Award. <laughs>